It's time for the Nebraska Baseball Coaches Show. The hitter now, the 1-0 pitch. Swings and lines one. Diving grab by Dylan Carey deep in the hole. Holy cow, what a play from D.C. Here comes the payoff pitch to Stone. Tyler swings and hammers one to right field. That ball is out of here. Tyler Stone turns around 94 for a two-run bomb to right field. And Nebraska gets the early jump today, 2 to nothing. Dice comes set, the 0-2 pitch. Strike three called outside corner, and Casey Dice able to work around the one-out walk and hangs the zero in the top of the eighth inning. Bradford at first base, it is Overbeek. Excuse me, Bradford at second base. The hit and run is on. Brumbaugh delivers in the score is Bradford. They're going to send Overbeek to second goes Brumbaugh. It's a two-run double by Caden Brumbaugh, and the Huskers lead 5-3. Now with Will Bolt, here's your host, Ben McLaughlin. Good evening. Welcome to the Nebraska ba Baseball Radio Hour. Welcome in Husker baseball coach Will Bolt. We have you for the next hour here on the Huskers Radio Network. If you want to be a part of the program, feel free to give us a call or a text 402-413-2400 to be a part of the show. The Huskers wrapping up a series victory over the Maryland Terrapins. Felt good after... What the Terps did to Nebraska last year to get some revenge at home in front of their home fans felt really good, especially the way the series ended. We welcome in head coach Will Bull. Now, it always makes the pillow feel a little softer going to bed on a Sunday after a series win, especially considering how Saturday went. Um, I had tons of people today reach out to, to just say how, how awesome Sunday was, and I, I'd imagine you felt the same. Yeah, it's always great. You know, we call it Championship Sunday for a reason because it's always – everybody's playing for something around the country on Sundays, whether it's a, you know, to get a series victory, it's a chance to get a series sweep or to avoid getting swept. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty pivotal day uh, to gain some momentum going to the next week. And yeah, like you said, I mean, um, <clears throat> got off on the right foot on Friday. Um, felt like we left maybe some runs on the board that we could have put them away on Friday a little bit more, but we got the win. Uh, Saturday obviously didn't go our way just from the, literally the first pitch. Um, and we didn't have, um, a great showing, but I, I was really proud of our team on Sunday, how we showed up, just our mindset. And you could tell before the game, we were really determined to put that to bed and, and uh, go, go play the, the way that we know we're capable of playing on Sunday. Right, wrong, or indifferent. I love what, standing behind the cage at BP just to kind of take it in and, 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 you know, see how the guys are handling today. Most times, I, I don't have a feel. You know, I, I – sometimes obviously more direction from the coaches than others. And then I walk up there not knowing what I'm going to see. I had a really good feeling about yeah. what I was going to see on Sunday. I hadn't, I hadn't sensed an edge like that about us yeah. uh, in a long time. Yeah. You, you get to a certain point of the season where um, maybe you, it's just kind of human nature. You, you take for granted each, each day of preparation. It's just like, okay, well, I'll get my swings in, I'll get my ground balls in and then we'll just go play um, but, but understanding that you really do capture that edge that, that you need to have for the game. Um, and, you know, and you're going to be, there's going to be days where you're tired, right? You, you dumped it out the day before you've played three games earlier in the week, but, but that, that mindset gets you beat, you know, when you start thinking about things that you can't control and, and, um, you know, just bringing that energy, does it, does it guarantee you a victory? Does it guarantee you're going to play well? Absolutely not. But it, it gives you a much better sh a shot to go go be focused. I mean, and I think that was, that was a message we wanted to hammer home on Sunday was, you know, you have enthusiasm, you have energy that helps your brain be more focused and then you can go execute what you're trying to execute. Um, and, and certainly we, we came out and played that way on Sunday. You and I have had a lot of chats post game about just emotions of a game and this game just messes you up emotionally. It's a hard game to play. Uh, I mean, even even in in the losses, like Saturday, for example, there are some guys that I felt really good about, and and you want to take the positives with, you know, to see Grant Clevenger come out and pitch the way that he did, Trey Fromm come in and throw strikes the way that he did. It's like, even on the on the on the days where things mostly go wrong, there are there are still positives, and vice versa. The, the days that go right, there you're probably as a coach some things that you hope to see a little bit different. What's the challenge as a coach dealing with young men and handling? you know, the broader scope of the successes and failures of a season, but also of the individual to keep guys in the right mindset to be able to go compete. Yeah, it is. It's not, it's a, it's an ongoing process um, for coaches and players alike. I mean, it, we're all human. And so there's a emotional part of it that, that gets involved with it, but the, the least amount of emotional um, 
I, I don't want to say emotional, emotional investment, but if you can take out the emotions from their performance, then you can just be very practical about how you go about your business from day to day. And, you know, you the game of baseball, it's different than football and, you know, some of the other sports where you just, you know, it's once a week. I mean, we're playing, we're practicing every day and you haven't, you have to have a short memory, win or lose. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you mentioned uh, the silver lining was Saturday. We, we have not had a lopsided loss, you know, this year, really. I mean, we hadn't had a whole lot of games where we just got our, our teeth kicked in like we did Saturday. And we haven't had a lot of games where we've just run away from teams either. There's, we've played a lot of close games. So it, there hasn't been that opportunity at times to see some of those guys um, that we want to see that have good stuff that – maybe haven't thrown as many strikes as that we'd like to see either in their limited amount of work or sometimes the live outings, but those guys have stayed very positive and they've, they've kept working. They've been good teammates. Um, and so, you know, it's good to see those guys get in there and have that type of success. Um, you know, and it's, that, that's an opportunity there. I mean, we saw it with Caleb Clark. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, that was an opportunity for him to get in a, in a game, and he, he got some confidence from that um, in a lopsided game in the Rutgers weekend that we were on the right side of. And so um, it, that, that, those, are, those are kind of the important intricacies of a team and a season. It's, it's how you can develop your pen as your, your offense goes and scores every inning, and you can kind of pull away from people, and you can not necessarily have to use the high leverage guys. Um, and then you can find some guys maybe that can grab some confidence that way. So um, it's a, it is, it's a, it's a game that is incredibly mental. It's taxing if you let it be, um, but it's also a game. And so that, those are things you have to remember too. One of the cool things about seasons like this, when you're winning a lot is you get a lot of Husker fans that will become attached to your programs. I've, I've been getting a ton. I can only imagine how often you get how many times I'm asked about Brett Sears. I mean, it's at least three to five times a new person asks right. me about him a week. And, mm -hmm. and you almost have a hard time explaining it because a lot of people don't know he was even on the team last year because his role was completely different and the way that his season went was completely different. Granted, he was pitching much better at the end of last season. And not only has he popped, but he is, it's one of the more dynamic changes of a career that I can remember and I say it every time he pitches on Friday night, like, don't take this for granted. Don't fit, take this for granted. Mason McConaughey learned the lesson, you know, this week. It, it, you just can't go out and expect to throw six quality start innings, nine quality starts in a row without doing a lot of things right. I know you've talked about it a million times, but what is it about Brett that allows him to do what he's doing at the level in which he's doing it? Yeah, <clears throat> well, first of all, he's talented. I mean, that, that goes without saying, right? But, he, I mean, he, he has – an immense amount of talent. He, he can do a lot of things very, very well. Um, <clears throat> he can repeat his delivery. Um, and when I say that, his mechanics, pitch to pitch, they're very, very similar. He doesn't lose it a whole lot. And in order to do that, you have to be very um, committed to your process of how you play catch and how you train and all those things. And it ha that, that has to be at the forefront every single day to have the consistency that Brett has. Um, so he has the talent. He has the, the consistency piece of it just in how he, he performs on days where nobody's watching. <clears throat> but he's also seen a lot at this point in his career, too. And sometimes it takes guys a little bit longer than others to figure it out. And, he, you know, he, he started his career as a Friday night starter at the Div Division One level at a mid-major at Western Illinois um, and then made the decision to go to junior college where he had an amazing year at Iowa Central. He was a starter. Um, you know, and he faced a lot of adversity for us last year. I mean, there weren't a whole lot of great outings in there, especially early. Like you said, he, he got it going there towards the end of the year for us. Once we kind of figured out, hey, this is probably going to be the best fit for him is to bring him in in a clean inning, give him an extended role, and just kind of let him go do his thing. Um, so he's done a very nice job of blending exactly what he would like to do as a pitcher with what Coach Childress is, is, is expecting from him as a pitcher. And he, he's able to just go uh, execute pitches. I mean, he's, I'm sure he, I've heard, heard Coach Schilder say this. He's a fun guy to call pitches for because you feel like he's going to execute every pitch that you call. Um, and if he, if he ever shakes off, he has a reason, and he's prepared. So, uh, you know, you, you have that trust in him that he can go do that. The thing that amazes me about him, it, like with all the data and analysis and everything that, that you guys, I'm sure, go through with preparation for a starter, he can completely flip a script 
on whatever the team thinks he's going to do. There are some, some games where it's primarily fastball the first trip through, and then all of a sudden he's throwing first pitch changeups and breaking balls the first trip through. There aren't a lot of college pitchers that can do that on command and stay out of the middle part of the zone while still throwing strikes. To me, that's, that's like the thing that sets him apart from most everybody else that we see. No, <clears throat> that, that's exactly right. There are, not, there are not a lot of guys that have stuff and command. <clears throat> and when I say that, it, it's stuff and strikes is one thing. Stuff and throwing it at the plate is one thing. I mean, that, that, that can get you through a few innings. I can get you a time or two through the lineup. But to have stuff and command, meaning that he knows where the pitch is going to go, um, and he can use the corners of the plate, um, he can use the top part of the strike zone, <clears throat> that, that's what you see the best big league pitchers do. They, they're trying to execute a pitch to the, I mean, you see a little, the strike zone mm-hmm. box in those games. I mean, they're, they're executing a pitch to a corner of that zone, whether it be the top left corner, top right corner, bottom left, bottom right. Um, <clears throat> and I feel like that's what, you know, Brett is able to do. And in, in the times he's not perfect, he gets away with some things because his, the ball, his fastball's got good, good life to it. And it's not a high spin fastball necessarily. It's the way he releases it. He really stays behind it. And the ball just, gravity doesn't take over on his, on his fastball. So you see a lot of guys swinging underneath it. And, um, you know, and then as soon as they start gearing up for that fastball, he can throw the right on right change up. He can throw the curve ball. He can put you away with a slider. Um, and he's just out there. It just, he is absolutely on attack. And so that, that definitely gets the hitter a little bit on his heels and, and he, he's able to really um, get after him that way. And then you throw in the tempo in which he works and that's just the cherry on top to, right. to everything that you just laid out. Speaking of changeups, I want to talk about Will Walsh. I thought the changeup yesterday set him apart and really allowed him to work into the sixth inning. And, you know, we all know kind of how it goes with Will. You know, he, he has the ability to, to do that. We saw him do it against Michigan State in the Big Ten tournament last, last year. There's been outings where he's just been spectacular. And the thing that I appreciate about him is he's the same guy all the time. Mm-hmm. Whether he hits two home runs in a game, whether he's 0 for 4 with three strikeouts in a game, whether he doesn't make it out of the first inning as a pitcher, every day I talk to him, he's the exact same, and you'd have no idea what he did the day before. Yeah, uh, that, that's exactly right, and that, that's one of the reasons that he's able to perform even better than probably what his talent says. I mean, and he's a talent, very talented young man, don't get me wrong. I mean, he can hit bombs right-handed. He can actually hit bombs left-handed if he really needed him to or wanted him to. Um, you know, he can, he can pitch. He, get, he can throw a left-handed fastball 90 miles an hour, which is what point how many ever percent of the entire population in the world can do. So, I mean, he, he's, he's got a lot of talent. Uh, but he is the same guy every day. He, he really is very, very consistent with how he shows up. He, he, you have a conversation with him like a grown-up. I mean, we kind of talk about that as, as coaches. I mean, and it's easier to, for us to get our point across to him and him to us because he has that ability to communicate. And that, that's a separator in, the, in college athletics where you really need to have, be able to have those conversations back and forth um, to get the most out of your ability and not just say yes, sir, because, you know, it's just to have that real honest feedback. And so, yeah, his changeup was great uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, you can kind of tell early on with him if he's getting the, the changeup to the plate without it being in the dirt. Like he, he, he can throw it some days where it just doesn't come out of the hand. It, it comes out of the hand too low and they're able to take it. But I thought throughout his entire outing, he, he looked, it looked like the fastball coming out of the hand. And, and he, was, he was up to 90 uh, with a heater. Um, so that was another good thing. And he, he was fresh because he's just kind of coming out of the bullpen. And he's been doing whatever role we'd ask him to do. Didn't even know until Saturday night that he was going to start on Sunday. And I thought he, he set the tone for us. He's done it just so many times in his career, you know, handed, handed him the ball and, and producing and in big moments. Contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. Want to switch gears to the offense and and mainly just the mentality shift from Saturday to Sunday. I mean, talk about guys that were just on it and it started right away from Brumbaugh drawing a walk in the first at bat of the game. That kind of just set the tone for the whole rest of the day. Stoney's at bat, obviously winning a three, two anytime with a walk, whatever is huge, but a home run makes it even better. The first inning, I feel like yesterday, really probably sent a message to Maryland. The Huskers aren't playing around today. Yeah, and Brum had a great at bat. Um, you know, we we executed the bunt, got a runner in scoring position, uh, and you know, Stony, you know, fresh, 
fresh off, you know, being basically on the IL for a few, uh, a couple of weeks here where he was just getting able to uh, pinch hit, um, him to come off the bench and have that type of at bat against a really good freshman arm. Uh, that, that was a fastball that he executed off the plate in where exactly where he wanted to throw the pitch at 95 miles an hour. That's the best swing Stoney's taken this year, and he's taken some really big ones for us. Uh, yeah, 3-2 win. I mean, we talked about it the day before. We had one of those for the first eight innings of the game. Um, so had a 3-2 win right there, right off the bat. Uh, big swing by him. Uh, and, you know, we just – we were just more aggressive, and you, you've heard me say that throughout the year. The, 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 when we are trusting and aggressive at the plate, we, we, we're dangerous, and we can drive the baseball. And, you know, you don't have to have, you know, four f clutch hits a game to, to win. I mean, timely hitting is always going to be a separator in a game, but if you can be aggressive to your pitch and take an aggressive, committed swing to your pitch – you're going to hit doubles. You're going to hit triples. You're going to hit the ball out of the park. And, you know, I mean, you got to be able to score in those ways as well. Um, and, oh, yeah, take your walks when, when they're there, uh, set up innings. So then when you hit your double, uh, it's a two-run double. You know, the bases are loaded. You're committed to your swing. You split a gap. You know, so those are things that we did at a high level. Um, and, and we're capable of doing that. And it's just, again, part of my job and part of our jobs as offensive coaches is to try to get the, the, the right guys in there with a position to succeed in the lineup. And so um, I, I thought it worked out that way really well Sunday. We had the left-handed hitters in there. Uh, Krev's been struggling a little bit, um, although he had a couple hits on Friday. Moved him down in the order, and I thought his hit-and-run swing, obviously not as sexy as the 3-2 the home run that, that, uh, that Stoney hit, but – We've been needing some execution in our lives a little bit. The guy that can just go get, get a job done. And uh, it, it was a ball they hit about 45 miles an hour, dunked in, but we go first to third, um, and it set up a big inning. To those that listen to our broadcast, no, there's not much that gets me more excited than an executed hit and run. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, comparing Krebs to, to Brum's, apples to oranges but they set up innings and they're just motivation like, like it they just are. it just provides such a spark for the dugout when when guys execute one more thing on the offense before you know we hit our first break to me the the other sign that our offense is working is the impact it has on the other team you know once we start getting bunts down and stealing bases next thing you know they're throwing the ball all around and right. giving us free bases that, that to me is when I know, okay, Nebraska baseball is working and it's starting to put pressure on the other guys. Yeah, that's a great point because you look up and they made three errors on Sunday. A lot of that was just us getting down the line hard. It was hitting hard ground balls, um, you know, and, and just them having – we ha had traffic on the bases. It's harder to field balls when, you know, you've got to possibly go cover for a stolen base. You've got to account for the, the bunt. Um, there were some moments in there where we really did exactly how, what we wanted to do to opponents where, you know, Overbeek uh, lays down a bun and he trucks the second baseman. I mean, got after him um, and then gets his way to second base and ends up scoring that inning. And we obviously score on that play because he executes a bunt. Um, and they probably weren't expecting it. You know, he hasn't done a ton of that this year. Um, but yeah, the, the stolen base threat, um, we're starting to stack some of those up. We had five in the game. Silva getting on base several times in the game, that certainly helps because you feel like when he gets at first base, it's a double. <laughs> everybody knows he's running and they, they can't do much about it. We saw uh, they balked in a run on Friday because they were worried about him in a first and third situation. So, yeah, I, that's exactly how we want it to look where we've got the guys in there taking committed swings that can drive the baseball and score runners from first base if we need to. Um, we can lay down bunts when we need to. We can hit and run. And we can steal third. Um, it, it just... It, it, that level of aggression is what we've got to have. For the record, t uh, Joshua Overbeek's not at the top of the list of guys that I want running me over at first no. base. Silva, maybe. Brum, maybe. There's some other guys that I would pick maybe before Overbeek. That's not one that I would voluntarily have run me over at first base running full speed. There's no question about it. Dorothy Lynch, home style, light and lean dressing, endless flavorabilities. We're off and rolling with Coach Bolt on our Nebraska Baseball Radio Hour. We'll take our first break. When we'll come back, we'll get some texts and some calls. If you've got a comment for Coach, give us a call or a text, 402-413-2400. We're back with more after this. Hi, I'm Tom Osborne, former football coach and co-founder of the Teammates Mentoring Program. And I'm Des Moines Adams, Husker Blackshirt and CEO of Teammates Mentor. 
we are recruiting teammates mentors and need caring adults to be in the lives of our students. Meeting with a student once a week at the school can make a positive impact in their life and have a ripple effect in our communities. Please join our team. Go to teammates.org today. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska is known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Not much can be counted on these days, especially getting timely rains. However, having a TNL irrigation system gives you water on demand. This is an insurance policy you pay for once and cash in time and time again. Perfect for all irrigators, TNL irrigation systems don't require complicated, expensive, and dangerous high voltage electricity. They're driven continuously forward by hydrostatic drives. Take some uncertainty out of farming with an intuitive hydrostatic powered TNL system. Visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Hey mom, yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay, I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. 
The Oscars Radio Network Broadcast Center is sponsored by Acres, a Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. This is the Nebraska Baseball Radio Hour. Ben McLaughlin joined in studio by Nebraska head baseball coach Will Bolt. Huskers now turn their attention to KU, rematch with the Jayhawks. That was a wild game in yeah. Lawrence. Holy cow. It was the first game, first it felt like spring. You know, we had to go down to Kansas to feel it, and then it's hard for me to remember an offensive slugfest like that, especially considering Ty's first inning, too. I think he, right. he looked electric in that first inning, and then it, both teams struggled to get outs. Yeah. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a slugfest, and um, you know that that's a pretty that ballpark can play pretty offensive when the wind is the way that it was, and the turf is super fast, and so <clears throat> there's a lot of hits to be had out there, and I think you can feel that in the box when you get up there. It's like okay, if I get the barrel to it, I got a pretty good shot of getting a good result here. Um, so yeah, they 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 had a good weekend. Uh, they beat Baylor two out of three over the weekend, and um, you're trying to make a run in, in the Big Twelve and. Obviously, have a lot of they have a talented lineup. I mean, they're they're hitting over 300 as a team with some homers, and um, so you know I, I think maybe a little bit different than last than last matchup is is that we have some guys available um, out of the pen that weren't as available or weren't as fresh uh, on t last time we played them that that are they get an opportunity to throw and I feel like that's kind of been the case for most of our Tuesday games where we haven't had a lot of our high leverage guys that are able to go much more than a, you know, a short outing. Um, just like I said, because we played so many close games. Um, so yeah, looking forward to tomorrow night should be in the, you know, looks like the temperatures are going to be in the seventies again. Um, hope to have a great crowd. Crowds were great this weekend. I mean, for the, uh, finally the weather was great Sunday, I think was as good of a weather day. Yeah. Coupled with the crowd that I can remember. It was, it was comfortable. The wind wasn't, screaming in anybody's face and no clouds in the sky yeah i mean it, it was 50 you know low 50s at first pitch but it didn't feel that cold because the big orange thing in the sky yeah. was actually out and there weren't a lot of clouds and like you said the the wind wasn't a major factor so yeah i agree i thought the crowds were awesome <clears throat> maybe a little bit rowdier this past weekend um that's I, okay yeah and i we as love long it. As we're being responsible we love it, it that way um <clears throat> where you know, we don't want it to be a, a place where opponents come and, and uh, it's comfortable. So it was a, uh, we had some really good crowds. Yeah, it was great to see. And hopefully people, you know, continue that. <laughs> Obviously home game tomorrow and uh, relatively big opponent on the schedule for this weekend as well. 402-413-2400. Call or text the show if you've got a question for Coach Bolt. Shoot us our way about halfway through our program here today. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We'll get to a couple of questions for Coach. We start first with Jeff in Omaha. Coach, Jeff wants to know, Case Sanderson stands in the front of the batter's box as close to the pitcher as any hitter I've seen. What are the advantages to this approach, and why don't more players use it? Well, I think it's just a comfort thing. It, it's, a, um, it's a feel thing for certain guys. I think um, <clears throat> the way that he moves, he, he, he wants to probably get more balls elevated. Um, you know, the right-handed changeup, he wants to get elevated. He makes a move to the ball that's pretty aggressive with his – his, his foot up in the air, and he, he makes a, a real aggressive move moving forward. So um, it's just a feel thing. Bryce Matthews was another guy that was um, – he liked to try to, I think, in his mind, get there before the, the ball broke at times with the slider. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think there's, there's, a, there's a time and place for different types of pitchers that you can move up in the box versus back in the box. And that, that's – Sometimes that's a bit of a battle for guys to make that adjustment in the box because they're just so comfortable. But big league hitters do it all the time. I mean, they, they, but part of it is, is that they play so many games, but they'll use a different bat based on what type of pitcher they're seeing. Um, you know, they'll, they'll move up or back in the box based on the type of movement for the, the pitches and, and those type of things. So... You know, good hitters, they, they, they can kind of make those adjustments. And so, you know, it's, it's a comfort and feel thing for, for everybody, um, you know, in case he just feels comfortable at that spart, part of the box. Tell us a little bit about Case. I'm around the team a heck of a lot, and I couldn't tell you a thing about him. I don't think <laughs> I've ever heard him talk. I don't think I've ever, you know, seen him outside of a, of a uniform. Um, you know, he's got the same look on his face every time I'm looking at him. Tell us a little bit about Case Sanderson. Yeah, so Case um, – one of the reasons he's been able to have so much success, obviously you've got to have the talent to be able to step in as a true freshman, uh, especially now where 
average age is as high as it's ever been in, in college sports. Um, you know, for, to be 18, 19 years old and step in and be able to compete right away, um, it's not as easy to do as maybe it was when I was in college. Um, but Case is a lot of the success that he has is because he he does a lot of work in the cages when nobody's watching. I mean, he'll get up early in the morning and go hit. He's been doing that since he got to college. Uh, very diligent um, in his faith. Um, he, he's he's a guy I'm always seeing have a, have a Bible open, and, and um, he's outspoken about probably the only thing you'll hear him talk much about is his faith, and, um, you know, that's a great thing for him and for for a lot of guys on our team, I would say. Um, but he, he's just... He's got a lot of talent. Um, he's got a great swing. He's got a great approach where he's not trying to pull the ball. Um, a lot of characteristics that a lot of good hitters have, he has. It's a sweet swing. It's a good approach. And he works hard. Uh, you know, there's not a magic pill that you take. Um, it, it's just, it's pretty simple when you start to break it down. And in cases, he's a quiet kid, um, very unassuming. But don't, don't let that fool you that he's not competitive or he's not um, intense. He, he, he brings it in a little different way. Sure fun watching him pipe the left center field gap. I can yeah. get used to watching that for a few more years. No doubt. Let's go to Colton next from Arkansas. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Glad to see the boys more aggressive on the first pitch off speed pitch yesterday. P.S. If they send us to Fayetteville this year, I'll talk to the NCAA for you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, again, that, that's something that we, we've talked about um, is just being more ready to hit in OO counts. And that – you, you drive in runs when you do that. You're, you're just ready to hit. And one of the guys that's done a good job of that this year that's, you know, it's no coincidence that he's had, you know, really good RBI numbers for us is Josh Karen. He's, he's ready to hit. And when Stoney's been in there, he's been ready to hit. And he does a good job of driving in runs. So it's just having that, that committed, trusting mindset that, I know I'm not going to get a fastball right down the middle. I mean, especially when, you know, you're in those, those, those key at-bats with runners in scoring position. You've got to hit the other pitcher's best pitches. And so you've got to be on balance to hit the breaking ball. Um, and when I say on balance, you can't be lunging out front. Uh, and you've got to be ready to hit the fastball as well and cover the plate. So I'm a big proponent of the first pitch swing, um, especially when you've got a chance to drive in runs. You've got a runner at third with less than two outs. Take your ground ball to short, you know. Um, so on the days that we scored a lot of runs, we've done a good job of that. And so it's just a matter of, of just kind of trusting that, that approach as we get going. And, uh, you know, I, I also believe firmly that you start to take more aggressive swings, you're going to walk more <laughs> because the pitcher is less comfortable with, with throwing the ball over the plate. He nibbles a little bit. And I, I thought we definitely saw that on Sunday. Yeah, I would agree wholeheartedly with that. If... Problem gambling is burning up your money. There's a way out. Help is free and confidential for Nebraskans and their families. There's no judgment. Just help. Visit lifeafterbet.com. Mike and Chad, sit tight. We'll get to your calls. But first, before we hit our next break, our time for our trivia question. And Huskers had a pretty unique circumstance yesterday. Run ruling Maryland on getaway day. New rule this year in Big Ten baseball. Our trivia question tonight, who, as in which team, was the last conference opponent Nebraska run ruled. Who, as in which opponent, was the last conference opponent? Nebraska run ruled. Mike and Chad, we'll get to your calls. We'll get to more texts coming up after the break. Don't miss out on limited time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in-store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1-4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Experience the difference and save more when you shop at one of our three convenient Woodhouse Ford locations. And right now, it's more affordable than ever to get behind the wheel of a new vehicle when you visit a Woodhouse Ford dealership. With special financing options featuring low APR rates and flexible terms, or lease deals with competitive monthly payments and minimal upfront costs. Owning a Ford from Woodhouse has never been easier. 
pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Husker fans, it's baseball season, and your Nebraska baseball team wants to see you at Haymarket Park. Season tickets, diamond deals, and single game tickets are on sale now. Get your tickets today and help the Huskers show everyone in the country why there is no place like Nebraska. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 1-800-8-BIG-RED. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Huskers. It's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Merch Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent Equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Husker fans, springtime in Sarpy County means sports and outdoor activities. Catch an Omaha Storm Chasers baseball game or a Union Omaha Pro soccer match at Werner Park. Visit Fontenelle Forest, where you can enjoy tree rush adventures or hike and bike on one of the many trails. Play a round of golf or experience great fishing. Relax, refresh, and rediscover yourself with a springtime trip. Plan your adventure at GoSarpy.com. Discover the entire lineup of luxurious sedans and SUVs at Genesis of Southwest Omaha, like the powerful and thrilling Genesis G70. Plus, receive a low APR of 2.9% for 48 months on the 2024 Genesis GV80. Start your car buying journey online at southwestomahagenesis.com today. With a proof credit, tax title license extra, repayment of $22.09 a month for 48 months for $1,000 finance for well-qualified buyers. No down payment required. Offer expires May 1st, 2024. See dealer for details. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. Introducing the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on a brand new 2023 F-150 only at your mid West Ford dealers. Husker fans, check out the all new Hyvee Perks program. Sign up for the totally free Hyvee Perks program and enjoy exclusive perks pricing on hundreds of items in store and online. Score big savings today at Hyvee.com slash 
perks. Our trivia question tonight, who was the last conference opponent Nebraska run ruled? Jake in Omaha knew it was the Iowa Hawkeyes. In fact, the last two times the Huskers have done it was against Iowa one. A couple of years ago, uh, ended up playing two games on Sunday due to a doubleheader. That was the infamous Garrett Anglin three-homer game. I would have lost a lot of money <laughs> if you would have told me there's a Husker this year that's going to hit three homers in a game. My pick would have been GA. I just I didn't see that one coming that year. Yeah. Yeah, that was a – I think he hit maybe four. And three of them <laughs> were in one right. game, and yeah. uh, he was all over the barrel that day. That's yeah, for sure. That was a fun one. There's no doubt about it. So congratulations to Jake in Omaha. All right, let's, uh, let's head to the phones and take our first call tonight. We're going to go up to Omaha and talk to Mike. Good evening, Mike. Hey, uh, Coach, there's three guys I got questions about, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, but, you know, I'll always love you for instituting the split step. I haven't been whining about that at all lately, you know. The oh, three yeah. guys. Yep. <laughs> the three guys. Stone, I thought he laid off a pretty good changeup before the home run. Am I right? He, he did. He laid off a, t a really tough change up, and uh, they How? that what they've done at times with him is they've slowed him up, slowed him down, sped him up, and uh, yeah, he did a great job of just staying on fastball there. I mean, the guy threw ninety five in on his hands, and he got the barrel to it. What was the speed of that ball coming off his bat on that home run? Do you know, it was a hundred off the bat. Yeah, it was a hundred. He hit about three hundred eighty five feet, but it was a hundred off the bat. Uh, I, which means he didn't actually get all of it. He, he got enough of it. The ball, like I said, it was in off the plate, so uh, he got enough of the barrel there, but um, it was a 95-mile-an-hour fastball that he hit. Yeah, it's interesting because it sure got out in a hurry. Oh, yeah, it did. Yeah, it got out in a hurry. Okay, other guy, Silva. I mean, a guy to me, I know he doesn't have the biggest arm, but it seems like anything remotely close to center field he can catch. And like you guys were saying, if he gets on first, it's like a double. Uh, what, is his range as good as I think it is in center field? It is, yeah. He's got, he's got elite speed, and he also has uh, elite first step. He, he really he closes on the ball well. Uh, he comes in on the ball well. He really ranges to the gaps. Um, he, can, he can erase some, some extra base hits. We've seen him do that. Uh, quite a bit, and, and um, yeah, he, he's just he's got a he's got baseball speed, and he's also got track speed, and it's hard to find both of those uh, at times with guys. There are some guys that you know may run you a great 60-yard dash time, but that doesn't translate between the, the white lines and in a in a box, so to speak, in the between the bases. But Riley has elite speed; he gets to first step. Uh, top speed very, very quickly as well, and that's what allows him to, to cover the ground and center. Yeah, and so many balls that we kind of take for granted but might have been hits with most other center fielders. I just think it's huge to have a guy with his talent. But the last question about Schwellenbach, and I've been uh, thinking about how close you guys were. If you beat Arkansas, who knows how far he would have gone. Uh, and he, he was a huge part of it. But that year he had with that combination of things he did for the team. And you've seen a lot of baseball in Nebraska and elsewhere. How good a year was that compared to other people you've seen in college baseball? Yeah, well, it was good enough to win the two year, the, the John Olroot Award as the top two-way player in the country. Um, he had he was a big league pitcher uh, and and a guy that didn't throw any bullpens because he just he he was coming off an arm injury and um, you know he was obviously our starting shortstop. I think the underrated thing about the year that he had was his defense um, because it. If the ball was hit to him, he, you were out. Um, and and he, he really perfected his footwork um, from his sophomore to junior year in particular. Um, he really worked hard on his footwork. Um, and, and he made some amazing big league plays up the middle uh, in the, the backhands. Obviously, he had a cannon for an arm. And probably my favorite play that I'll ever remember uh, from Spencer was in the Rutgers game and, the, and that pod. They had a, we had, he, had, he had already pitched in that game, and, and we moved him to first base. And remember, in 2021, we didn't have midweek games because we just played conference-only games. And so every Tuesday, we would have Spencer go to first base just in case his arm was hanging and he couldn't play shortstop. And, um, but it was a very instinctual play. Ball hits the right center field gap. Jackson Hallmark cuts it off, wh whips it to the infield, and, and – kind of almost like the Derek Jeter play where he comes out of nowhere. Um, you know, he's there in the middle of the field to, to catch the ball and throw it to the plate to gun down the potential game-winning run. I mean, that was a type of player. High IQ, obviously very talented, um, and, and just 
when it came to competing on game day, Spencer was as, as good as it gets. So um, look forward to following his career to the big leagues uh, now as a, as, a, as a pitcher. Absolutely. And apparently they were even sure if the, to play him as an infielder too because he was so good, like you said, at that. Yeah, and I think there were a lot of teams that would, would have been willing to give him that shot as a, as a infielder first, um, you know, and a hitter. And he's physical and he could run for a guy his size. And um, I, I just think you had to kind of get over, uh, you know, I, I remember having scouts come up to me in the fall saying, well, I just don't know, you know, if he's going to be a shortstop or what he's going to be. And I was yeah. like, just, just watch him. Just watch him like I do every single day. You'll see the footwork that – He's obviously got the arm strength to be able to do it. And, uh, man, he played a heck of a shortstop for us. Hey, good luck. And I hope we, what we saw yesterday becomes the norm instead of the exception. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Wouldn't be my first Husker radio show back in four years without talking about the split step from Mike in Omaha. So I always appreciate that. I remember that play like yesterday. I had no idea where Jackson's throw was going <laughs> out of nowhere. Spencer just, I mean, it was a ho that, that almost epitomized that team, it that did. play kind of summed up what that team was all about. Yeah. And earlier in that game, uh, Spencer stranded a leadoff triple. Uh, he, he gave up a leadoff triple uh, in maybe the ninth or 10th inning and they didn't score. Um, and then he ends up at first base and makes that play. And Griffin Everett got a big hit to, you know, I think we won three out of four games that weekend. Just the weird year of, of playing pods and, and that type of thing. But, um, yeah, that, that's a play I'll always remember. Yeah, one of the few memories of that ballpark that I've had over the years doing the, the Big Ten that, uh, that I've enjoyed. That was just a, a dynamic, dynamic play that, that those guys made. The Oscars Radio Network Broadcast Center is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres. Solutions for every field. We got a couple more texts to get to before we wrap up, Coach, after this. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you, too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. Introducing the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on a brand new 2023 F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting Major Jake Strantz with Campus News. UNL and UNMC are leading new research to protect U.S. troops. Working in collaboration with U.S. Strategic Command, Nebraska scientists are developing a treatment that keeps armed forces safe from radiation caused by enemy attacks. The new research contract was secured through the university's National Strategic Research Institute. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. 
Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. What else? Auto Family is your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying in your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. 402-413-2400. You got a comment for Coach? Text or call. We got a couple minutes left here on the program. And before we wrap it up here tonight, we'll go down to Kansas and talk to Tom. Hey, Tom, what's going on? Big Ben, you all... Old friend, uh, good to good to hear from you. You as well. I, hey. I, I halfway expected your call tonight. Glad to hear you. Oh, it's great. Hey, I wanted to say, I know I only got a few minutes or a few seconds here. I do want to tell you that I do appreciate you bringing back the man Lane Grendel with the little bye-bye baseball in one of the, I can't remember which game it was. I remember. Do and you remember I, doing and I looked that? at Greg, I was like, yeah, I'm going to hear, the, hear about that later from him. <laughs> Hey, I loved it. You can get away with it because you're you're a great broadcaster for the Huskers, and it's just awesome. I I was so excited when you said it. Appreciate um, that, Coach Bolt. Uh, congratulations on a on a win this uh, se- or this weekend. What I wanted to ask you was, what did you say to the guys? Because I'll go back to the Ohio, the last game of the Ohio State series. Our two strike, not two out hitting. Our two strike approach was terrible. And, I mean, they were trying to, it, even in that Creighton game, trying to pull uh, off-plate, uh, off-speed pitches and just either striking out or yanking them into the ground. What, what changed? What did you say to them? Because their approach yesterday was just phenomenal. And uh, I'll hang up and listen to you. Go Big Red. Yeah, thanks, Tom. And, and I couldn't agree more. I mean, I thought, um, you know, I didn't mince any words about how I felt, uh, you know, I, I – rarely mince words, but just some of the um, approaches at at times are not where they need to be. And, um, you know, we, we've, I, again, I, to what I will always go back to is um, the aggression that you have at the front of the count allows you to be a better two strike hitter. So you hit with two strikes less number one. um, But if you're on time and ready to hit early in the count, um, you're, you're uh, more likely to take balls uh, and, and hit strikes. And so I, I, just, I, I just really wanted to emphasize that going into the day on Sunday. That's how our batting practice was, was tailored. It was just it was, um, taking aggressive swings, and we were just more, more ready to hit. And we did get into quite a, two, quite a few two-strike approaches. But, you know, you were able to see us, as you said, we weren't trying to pull the ball, pull the outside pitch, just kind of doing, given what the pitcher, you know, gave us instead of trying to, to go, um, you know, hit the ball out of the park with two strikes. It's funny when you don't try to do it, a lot of times it does, it does happen for you. Yeah, baseball is a weird game, as, as we mentioned. Coach, we appreciate it. Big, big week this week. I know you don't like to put one in front of the other, but anytime you get to play in front of your home crowd um, against Iowa in particular and an old Big 12 opponent, it's, there's going to be plenty of juice, I would imagine, in, in the stands. And Let's keep this thing rolling. Yeah, looking forward to this week and then no, no bigger game than the one tomorrow night against Kansas. Yeah, it should be a good crowd again. Good weather t- tomorrow night. Come on out to the ballpark. See these boys play. It's going to be a, a, an electric week, I would imagine, uh, for the boys and hopefully everybody out in droves to come see them play. Husker fans, check out the all-new hy Perks program. Sign up for the totally free hy Perks program and enjoy exclusive perks pricing on hundreds of items in store and online. Score big savings today at hy slash Perks. That'll wrap it up for us. Jessica Cootie back with Hour 2 of Sports Nightly after the break. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation has known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers!
Good evening. I'm David Swotek, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Big day for transfers at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. First in the, the, the gymnastics world, Nia Kraus will be joining the women's gymnastics team for the 2024-2025 season. Kraus is a sophomore from Lindenwood with national qualifying score rankings of 9.835 on bars, 9.880 on beam, and 9.830 on floor. She has two years left of eligibility to help bring home some titles with the Huskers. The transfers just keep coming in, this time for men's basketball. Connor Ajison will be joining the Nebraska team for the 2024-2025 season after spending two years with the Wisconsin Badgers. He still has two more years of eligibility left as well to help out the Huskers. Ajison, a, six, a six foot four point guard from Fort Wayne, Indiana, played in 33 games with the Badgers, averaging 3.2 points per game. Finally, the NBA playoffs are in full swing with some first round action tonight. The Orlando Magic and Cleveland Cavaliers match up for game two of their series. The Cavs won the first game and they are leading the second game as well, 50 to 36 with three minutes and eight seconds left in that second quarter. The New York Knicks host the Philadelphia 76ers for game two of the series. The Knicks grabbed that first win, but the 76ers are not making it easy. Philadelphia is up 25 to 18 with 37 seconds left in the first quarter. And some late night action between the Los Angeles Lakers and Denver Nuggets later tonight. Denver won the first game of the series and are seeking out that second one later at 9 p.m. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is Hour 2 of Sports Nightly, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here comes the 3-2 pitch. Lifted to right and drifting over near the line is Williams and looking up and it is gone. Wind blows it right out of here. It's a grand slam for Will Walsh. It's 5-0 Big Red. To the wall, reaches back, but it's gone. A two-run home run for Ava Bradwell. A moonshot that just cleared the wall and left. And the Huskers take a 3-1 lead in the second. The hitter now, the 1-0 pitch. Swings and lines one. Diving grab by Dylan Carey deep in the hole. Holy cow, what a play from D.C. The pitch from Chambers. Coke golfs one to center and deep. Going back to Gadillo, and it's gone! Three-run home run, Emerson Coke. Make it 5-2 Nebraska. Here is your host, Jessica Cootie, on the Huskers Radio Network. Welcome into Sports Nightly. Happy Monday, everybody, and happy spring game week. It's finally here. We have talked a lot about that here on the show, that it seems like we've been, it's, it's been longer than, than usual, that we've been talking spring football, but it's uh, all going to come to fruition and, and have uh, the grand finale coming up on Saturday with the spring game. There are still some tickets available if you want to get your hands on some of those. they got some great prices, huskers.com slash Tickets. Uh, great last hour there. That last hour, the Husker baseball show with Will Bolt and Ben McLaughlin stepping in. Appreciate him uh, coming in tonight. But uh, congratulations on another Big Ten series win. And it sounds like it was um, pretty exciting, Cole, out there at the ballpark this week with the addition of the uh, beverages flowing. That's right. Did you, I think you were. Did you catch the? Yeah. I mean, the uh, fans were maybe a little more into it. I don't know. Do you think it had an effect, or? Well, I wasn't there, but Coach Bolt said he thought maybe, uh, maybe could could uh, feel a little bit more rowdiness. But right. hey, um, it needs to continue to be rowdy as they close out uh, this Big Ten conference season, regular season. Just a few more opportunities and a, a big one coming up tomorrow night. But uh, yeah, so again, thanks to Ben and uh, Coach Bolt for stopping by. So coming up here on this hour of Sports Nightly, got a couple fun interviews lined up for you. We're going to hear from Riley Van Poppel, the now sophomore defensive lineman who was one of those true freshmen last fall that were able to step in and, and help build that critical depth there on the D-line for Terrence Knighton. And a uh, great interview. Uh, really enjoyed chat chatting with him. We've also 
also got a fun conversation coming up with the Anglums, Garrett and Lauren, the brother sister duo, Husker duo. Uh, that's coming up here in just a few minutes. But uh, let's start with more good news uh, out of the transfer portal for Nebraska men's basketball, as David had in the ticker. Uh, another edition, the fourth edition out of the transfer portal. Connor is Sejan, the shooting guard out of Wisconsin. So he, he spent the last two seasons with the Badgers, as uh, David said, and we'll have two seasons left. He had a really, really outstanding freshman season, was one of the best freshmen in the Big Ten in 22-23, broke the Wisconsin three-point uh, freshman record. And uh, Coach Hoiberg said he's an outstanding shooter that has – that confidence that good shooters have and also noted his Big Ten experience. But if anybody knows and understands the confidence of good shooters, it's uh, Fred Hoiberg. To me, this is a, a really intriguing get because I, I really felt like they, they needed another shooter just with the the departures of Casey Tominaga due to graduation and then C.J. Wiltshire in the transfer portal who also just announced that he is headed to Texas A&M, so he's going to be an Aggie. But, uh, you know, with those two, with your, your, your shooters gone, and then Jamarcus Lawrence as well, who, who was able to knock down a few threes, you know, to, to add another shooter, which he is, he's no doubt, he's done it enough, and you've seen it. I think, you know, looking back at last season for him, maybe not the season that Wisconsin fans expected for him after coming off the freshman season, I think he got hurt, suffered an injury in one of the early games of the season, and then when he came back, seems like he, he struggled some defensively, and that's what maybe limited some of his minutes there. But, it, you know, I don't really see that as, as an issue at all because if, if that was something that this coaching staff didn't feel like they could work with, it, it, it wouldn't have been an addition to this because we've seen how important the, um, the defensive efforts have been for this team these last two seasons. But he was asked after the season, uh, you know, kind of what he needed to do to be able to maybe make a step. And he just said, I've just got to get bigger faster, stronger, and I'll just leave it at that. But seems like he's really excited to be a Husker. He, he posted on his social media, and um, I can't wait to see how he fits in the system. Again, you, Coach Hoiberg can never have enough of those shooters. So uh, another addition there, I believe they might be targeting one, maybe two more we will see there. But uh, good news after good news there. So you now have... The big man and Andrew Morgan, the 6'10 center out of North Dakota State. The veteran point guard in Raleigh Worcester. Gavin Griffiths, the 6'8 guard out of Rutgers. And now a siege and adding uh, another shooter there. So those are the four. So Cole, bringing you in here, which one of those four are you most excited about? Yeah, these are all good gets. I, I, I think I have two. Um, I, I said gonna, one, Cole. Okay. <laughs> I would say Gavin, Gavin particularly I'm excited about. Both Gavin and Connor, though, have Big Ten minutes, and I know Connor's playing time was limited last year, but freshman year, he was playing like 15 minutes a game. Gavin was playing about 20 minutes a game last year. So, to me, the experience, knowing that they can shoot under pressure in a Big Ten game, that's uh, what we need right now to replace the likes of Casey and CJ. Yeah, you just, I mean, you that's just huge to have that Big Ten experience. And, and I really think, and Greg and I talked about this a couple weeks ago, but I think even for rink mast Bryce Williams, of as good of players as those guys are, I think it was a bit of an adjustment for them even coming into the Big Ten. It's a lot more physical. So, so to have guys that are already familiar with what it takes to win at this level and, and have significant minutes, I think, is, is really big to add. I said this, but C.J. Wiltshire, I, I wanted to read this because I thought it was pretty special. We heard him say some, some really awesome things about this team and the culture and, and him being a part of this season this year. He graduated, and so we, we thought, he, we assumed maybe he was going back towards the East Coast where he's from, but he posted this on his Instagram. Thank you, Husker Nation, for the past three years. I'm beyond grateful for my time here. I've built relationships on and off the court that will last a lifetime. This place has become a second home to me, and I couldn't thank those enough that have been involved with me in my time here. There's no place like Nebraska GBR, you know. So just for him, you just don't always see that where when when players leave and there might be some hostility, but for him to, I thought that was really, really big of him and, and really nice of him to share that and just how much this place meant to him because I think you did. I think you saw how much he loved being here. I just think for him, he was looking for some, some different and, and bigger opportunities that, Apparently, he hopes he can get at Texas A&M. Some other intriguing 
transfer portal news. So, Chucky Hepburn sounds like might be leaning towards Louisville. And uh, Cole, listen to this. So, just reading up on some things, it sounds like he might have been offered a, a outrageous NIL to like seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh my! Crazy, huh? Oh my! It's getting up there for <laughs> for some of the top. Uh the top college hoops players. Yes. Before it was just football that, you know, people were talking about these six figure NIL deals, but 700K? 750, yeah. Wow. So we'll see um, where he is leaning there. And then um, Frankie Fiddler, that uh, out of Omaha, sounds like it is all but official that he is headed to Michigan State. So that started, that news started trickling out. He came on a visit to Nebraska and um, had him in the Final Four. He pushed back his decision date, and so, but the news started coming out today that he was probably going to be at Michigan State, and uh, we received word that it sounds like it is uh, pretty much official that he is headed to Michigan State. So, um, I, I guess I didn't ever answer my question towards you, Cole. Right, which of which you're most excited about? So I, I, I think I got to go with Gavin Griffiths as well, just because, you know, I know Coach Hoiberg was really excited about that. I just don't think he was a good fit for the Rutgers system, and I think he's the perfect fit for Coach Hoiberg's system. And, you know, 6'8", guard can stretch the floor. It's just ideal for this system. So I, I think as much as his numbers, his stats didn't just completely blow you away, I think that it's it was more so a product of the system that he was in and, and finding the right fit, and I think this is the right fit for him. So I, you know, the the challenge is now that you've got in all these newcomers coming in, and and we heard a lot about this last summer with the the transfer portal additions leading into the season. They had such a good culture, and it really started in the summer. I, I kept asking the players and the coaches, when did you feel like this maybe could be something special? And they all went back to last summer and, and what was established and how they started bonding immediately in that chemistry. So, you know, every time that you start meshing together guys that haven't played together and, and haven't been as you know, as maybe is familiar with being on the court together. That's always the next step is getting those guys familiar with each other. But, you know, the big thing is most of these guys are experienced. Uh, some of them maybe a little bit younger, but usually when you have those veteran guys, they typically understand their role and, and come in and try to fit right in. But, you know, I, I, I just keep going back to what Coach Hoiberg has found that's worked with the culture and, and finding guys that fit into that. And so I fully believe that all these guys are going to fit perfectly into that. So, uh, but again, more big news and we will maybe hear at least one more. We will see, uh, be interested to see what they do with that final scholarship. What do you think, what other need do you think the team should get, Cole? I'm um, trying to think. I mean, getting another, a big man could be good because we, we lost Alec, uh, and then we're kind of unsure of some other pieces. So I, wouldn't you think another another 6'10 plus kind of guy? We have some depth now at guard, and we have some depth now uh, for shooters. Yeah, and, and Blaze Kate is gone as well. And right. we don't know. We still don't know the status of rank mast. So, yeah, I mean, definitely probably another, another big man um, inside, just some depth there for that rotation of those big guys because you need it you got to have the depth and, and we'll, i was just sorry to interrupt no, i was just good. to say and we'll see because i i believe we picked up matar really late last year maybe into june or was it that we picked him yes, up onto yes, our roster? yes so matar was um they they had that scholarship and it, i believe it was it was in the summer and so they went to the nba camp and discovered him and, and brought him in. So yeah, I you know they might hold on to it. They might. They I know that they've had some visits that they're still waiting to hear some decisions being made. They they've been so busy. They've had so many guys on campus here uh, since the season ended and trying to put this roster together. But I, so I, I know they're still waiting word on a couple other guys. But you know if they don't find the right fit, maybe they hold on to it and see from there. But yeah, still still not done yet for Nebraska basketball, but I, I think they've gotten some good pieces for sure. All right, we got to get to our first break here on our hour number two of Sports Nightly. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit, visit us online at woodhouse.com. 
For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. Introducing the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. This is the next generation of Built for Tough. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on a brand new 2023 F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Don't miss out on limited time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1 4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Tickets are on sale now for the High V Indie Car Race Weekend Concert Series. Saturday, July 13th, see Luke Combs and Eric Church. And Sunday, July 14th, see Post Malone and Kelsey Ballerini live in concert. One ticket per day gets you into a race and two concerts. Tickets on sale now at High V Indie Car Weekend.com. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting major Skylie Nelson with Campus News. Nebraska is gaining businesses and jobs thanks to UNL's Angler Agribusiness Entrepreneurship Program. Angler alumni have started 70 new businesses across Nebraska, generating over $147 million in revenue and creating more than 120 jobs in our state. Angler is one of several entrepreneurial programs creating opportunities for students to build businesses at Nebraska. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Not much can be counted on these days, especially getting timely rains. However, having a TNL irrigation system gives you water on demand. This is an insurance policy you pay for once and cash in time and time again. Perfect for all irrigators, TNL irrigation systems don't require complicated, expensive, and dangerous high voltage electricity. They're driven continuously forward by hydrostatic drives. Take some uncertainty out of farming with an intuitive hydrostatic powered TNL system. Visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. A few drinks at home after work, a couple of hits at a party with some friends, over-the-counter drugs for a minor illness, a new daily prescription, and you're not quite sure how it makes you feel. It doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If it impairs you, driving becomes deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. 
Farming Today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more acres solutions for every field. Welcome back to the Monday Night Edition of Sports Nightly. So you might recall a couple months ago, I sat down with Becca, Rebecca and Josiah Alec, had a fun conversation there with the Husker siblings. Wanted to keep it going because there's another Husker duo, a brother sister duo here on campus, in Garrett Anglum, the redshirt junior from the baseball team, and Lauren Anglum, the junior from the Nebraska soccer team. Lauren played a big role. She's a defender, was a big part of the Husker soccer team getting to the Elite Eight last season. So, uh, recently had a chance to chat with the Anglums, get to know them and, and their, how it's like, what it's like for them being together here at Nebraska. Obviously, a sports family and an athletic family. How did you guys first get into sports when you were younger? Uh, I don't know. I think that's just our parents pushed that towards us, uh, just to go out and compete, play sports, stuff like that. So kind of put us out and everything and see what we liked. And obviously, I stuck with baseball, and she stuck with soccer. So Yeah, it didn't really seem like much of like an option. Like We just kind of <laughs> like that was what we did. And like I was the youngest, so both of my siblings, they both played sports. So it was just kind of what we did yeah yeah were you guys competitive growing up yeah I would say so for sure what did you compete in uh anything I mean I always wanted to be better than them so <laughs> it didn't really matter what it was yeah I think for the most part I, I was but. <laughs> you're not like the family that can play like board games or anything <laughs> yeah. because we just like even my mom like she was would get mad and like yeah. it just starts problems if yeah. we we weren't very good losers yeah. growing up. So. <laughs> yeah. That's good though. That's good. So um, you b both uh, again you mentioned both kind of playing sports, multiple sports growing up. But what ended up leading to your love of baseball? Uh, you know, honestly, uh, I kind of realized that I, it was not only fun, but I was kind of good at it. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously that kind of pushed me towards that. And then it was a time for me to be able to spend a lot of time with my dad, um, just kind of outside. He was always busy with working. So we'd go and he'd throw to me, we'd hit. So I kind of enjoyed that and I just kept working at it. So. And Lauren, you played some softball growing up, a little bit of basketball until you were in eighth grade. Yeah. Uh, why soccer for you? Softball, I, I only played like coach pitch <laughs> and it didn't really stick. I, it was a lot of swinging and missing for me. But um, just soccer, I liked that it was different. My sister played a little bit growing up, but it was mainly, she mainly played softball and he played baseball, so I liked that it was something different, and I was definitely, I think I was the best at that, so. So was, were your parents, one, where you, they had to make a plan on how to get to everybody's games? Because in high school, and soccer's in the spring, so with baseball and soccer overlapping, how did your parents make it to everything? Uh, they kind of just split. I mean, one pair <laughs> one way, one pair with the other, and sometimes my old sister had a game too, so grandparents would go, and it's kind of what, it was what it was. Yeah, it was very rare that both of them were able to go to our games. And, like, growing up, I was always at the baseball field or the softball field, so... So do you like watching baseball then? I do like watching it, yeah. Yeah. Have you, how much have you learned just, again, being at the Diamond all growing up, I'm sure? Yeah. I definitely, all my teammates ask me all the baseball questions. So. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, when you start seeing, because since you're the youngest, uh, what was it like for you to watch Garrett when he starts going through his recruiting process in high school? Um, it was definitely, like, it was cool to see that he... Um, was getting looked at by all these schools and um, 
it was just cool to see like his hard work finally paying off and like being recognized by schools because like he was gone a lot and he would always be at the batting cage my dad would be gone with him so like it was cool to see the recognition and just kind of find his path to to Nebraska so I asked her if she was a baseball fan are you a soccer fan you like watching soccer uh, it's grown on me a little bit. <laughs> I would say growing up I was not a soccer fan, and I still don't know the ins and outs of soccer, but it's grown on me a little bit. So so I just asked her about what it was like. So you go through it first, so then when she starts going through it, what kinds of words of advice, how did you guys converse and talk about what to expect when she starts going through the yeah, process? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's kind of a different process. I think soccer gets recruited a lot mm -hmm. earlier. So... Um, Baseball is kind of like a later deal, mm -hmm. but it's just kind of like, I mean, don't try to do anything more than like what you do, like go out and play your sport and let your talent take your way to it, you know? Yeah, it was kind of a weird timing with like me because it was right before the rules changed. So I actually committed freshman year of high school. Oh, yeah. So and then with COVID, everything changed. So it was kind of like a weird time of not like the normal recruiting process. Right. For, for right. Me. So, yeah. Were you guys Husker fans growing up? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I kind of have an interesting story, too. I was committed to Wichita State my sophomore year of high school. Mm -hmm. And then I decommitted when they got a uh, coaching change. So she was already committed to Nebraska, and she thinks that I... Committed here first. My <laughs> oh, school. Just wanted yep. to follow her here, so... So that, uh, probably most people think, since you're older, that yeah. you were the first, but yeah. you were the first Husker. Yep, yep. I paved the way. One, but... <laughs> I love that. <laughs> paved the way. So what, what kinds of... Did you guys go to games growing up? Like, were you always around this program? How did you become Husker fans, I guess? Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're from Nebraska, you're a Husker mm -hmm. football fan. So um, just kind of that dynamic and... We'd always go to baseball games, stuff like that, too. So it's always been a dream. And you go to the ballpark, and it's a beautiful place. The fans are always crazy. Everyone always shows up. So um, you look around, there's not a lot of stadiums like that in America. So it was always a dream to, you know, be able to play there and have family close by so they could come visit and watch your games and stuff like that. So I think another thing is just, like, the amount of traveling we did, like, growing up playing sports. But, like, you would be in a random state, and there'd be Nebraska fans. Like, it was just cool to see that it wasn't just here, that there was Nebraska fans, that they're literally everywhere. So, so were you a Nebraska soccer fan then growing up? I, I was a Nebraska soccer fan. I definitely didn't, like, go as much games. Like, our family didn't watch a ton of soccer growing up, where, like, baseball and, like, football, we watched those sports more. But then once I committed, I was always here at every game. So, yeah. So cool. that being said, being that you were longtime Husker fans, what did it mean when that offer comes in and you're like, hey, you want to be a Husker after watching them your whole life? Yeah, since it was so early for me and I was just a freshman, it was, it was since it was Nebraska, I felt comfortable committing that early because I was like, this is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I think if it was any other school, I would have had a really hard time committing that early. But since it was here, it was just like felt right. What was it like for you when that offer comes in for you to come be a Husker? Yeah, it was, it was just a no doubt. Like, as soon as I got that offer, it was like, of course, like, that's the decision I'm going to make. And I'm super stoked about it. So it was super easy for me to make that decision. What was it like when, so you're on campus first, yep. when she gets on campus? How was that dynamic? Uh, it was interesting at first, obviously, because, <laughs> I mean, I have two years on my own, and then she kind of shows up. So, I, <laughs> I mean, it, it's cool, though, but it, it was a little interesting at first. It was just kind of like weird to see her around you know all the places i've been for two years but what was it like for you when you get here and you see him around you know i didn't really know any different yeah. so but I, it was weird just because it's like you're going to your stuff but then you just like see your brother walking in the hallway or in the training room and it's like oh there he is but yeah <laughs> and, you know if you look at both of the rosters on baseball and soccer you see a lot of kids from the state of nebraska you guys are both products of nebraska what does that say about the state and that you guys the state produces talent that can compete here at nebraska yeah i mean uh nebraska's always been a school to recruit locally um and i think that that means a lot because it's just like to other people in other, or other states, they might not recognize like what Nebraska is and what we have to offer, but for the in-state kids, it's everyone's dream to come here. So when you get that offer to those kids with talent here, it's, it's a no-brainer for them because there's no other place like Nebraska. And Lauren, for you, it's like half the team is from yeah. Nebraska. That's going to be pretty cool to be a part of. Yeah, I think you just grow up watching like the grit that Nebraska players have. And so seeing that, and that's all you see, so then when you finally get the chance, like, you grow up playing like that, but then once you're here, you can kind of carry that on, and that's, like, what we're known for, so, yeah. How much pride do you guys take in that, that there is so many 
high school talent that you guys can come together here and and do big things together the the local talent here yeah i think it's really special that you know we're just a lot of people say we're just nebraska or like people from out of state or even out of country they're like i don't know understand how like nebraska has so many like how so many of you guys are from nebraska but it's just just how we are i guess yeah and i think um like as nebraskans we take pride in being like nobodies i think that um no one's really going to know our name in those big states and stuff like that. And we really take pride in being those nobodies and, you know, kind of proving ourselves every day. Fun questions here. Who would be better at the other sport? So would you be better at soccer or would you be better at baseball? I think I would definitely be better at soccer. <laughs> I don't think I could hit. Maybe I could pitch. I've, I've been her. working I've on my curveball. So. <laughs> I can throw the right ball. I, I, I think hitting is what would get I me. You could throw the ball I don't think feet. you could kick the ball. <laughs> Oh, I With the, the tip of his toe, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be rough to see either of us. Yeah. Okay, so you, you mentioned board games earlier. So was there a board game that you guys played? Or oh, is there... I, like we said, honestly, we did not you, play you board can't, games. Just you can't? You literally can't. It, just, it would not go good for our family. I mean, there would be some drama and some fights going on about <laughs> cheating or losing. Yeah, so it would not go We stayed away well. from that. So who is the most competitive then? Because you mentioned your mom is competitive. I mean, so who, who is the most competitive? 100% my mom. Yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> She's bad. I think my See, dad's learned that and he's learned just to accept it. Yeah. Because uh, he's just not going to win. With my, her, so. Maddie's honestly, our sister is really competitive too. Yeah. I think she takes any opportunity, sports or non-sports, to win when she can. So yeah. <laughs> she's pretty bad too. Uh, well... Again, just, uh, you know, to be able to, to wear this Husker uniform, what has it meant to you to be a Husker and just for your family throughout your time here? Uh, it's been an honor. I, I always cherish my moments here in Nebraska and uh, just kind of learned you can't take a single day for granted uh, wearing the band on your chest, you know. So uh, it's been, a, been an honor to be here. Uh, I love to have my family close by, um, like grandparents as well, just to be able to show up. So I think it's worked out well for that reason. And like I said, it's just it's been great to play at this university. Yeah, I think it's just been special just to be close to your family and get all the opportunities that Nebraska provides for you here. So it's the best of both worlds, and I wouldn't have done it any other way. Sorry, I kind of struck up a nerve there. Do we need to hug it out? You guys need to hug it out? Are you good? No, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We'll all get right. over it. <laughs> oh, that was fun. I really enjoyed it. Appreciate Garrett and Lauren Anglum sitting down with us. They went to Papillion La Vista High School. Here is a fun fact for you. So they shared the exact same birthday. They're two years apart and are, were born on the same day, but two years apart. So uh, that was fun. And how about Nebraska soccer? They closed out the spring season uh, on Saturday with a 1-0 win over none other than Colorado. I know that just, uh, that pains you, Cole, right? Always beating Colorado? That always is always is good that that's a good team i mean from their run last yep. fall in the ncaa's to now that's a that's a really good team yeah i i, I talked to coach uh, walker and he said um you know talking he's excited about this group they got a lot of that group coming back you got to replace eleanor dale uh, but you got sarah weber coming back so you know replace some of that scoring from eleanor dale but this is a, a really talented group i think they're going to be able to build off of that elite eight performance and and carry it into this year and how about coach roll was even out there he posted a photo out there he was out uh, at the soccer stadium uh, so, uh cheering on the, the nebraska win over colorado so a uh, fun weekend congratulations and and i actually chatted with them both uh, about what their parents are going to do they had a busy weekend but uh, how fun is that if you're uh, i've garrett and lauren's parents that you get to figure out how you're going to get to all the sporting events over the weekend but uh no better weekend there than to be able to watch soccer and baseball the same weekend all right got to step aside for a break here on sports slightly coming up next we're going to hear from the defensive lineman now sophomore defensive lineman riley van popple husker fans check out the all-new hyvee perks program sign up for the totally free hyvee perks program and enjoy exclusive perks pricing on hundreds of items in store and online score big savings today at hyvee.com slash perks Woodhouse GMC is bringing you more. With every new GMC purchase from Woodhouse, we're including three years of scheduled maintenance. Plus, with our current lease offers going on now, you'll save even more. Lease a 2024 GMC Terrain SLE for $397 a month for 39 months, 10,000 miles per year. Zero dollars due at signing. Woodhouse GMC, we are professional grade. With approved credit, must finance with GM Financial. Must currently lease a 2019 or newer Buick or GMC vehicle to qualify. Offer expires April 30th, 2024. See dealer for details. 
Husker fans, springtime in Sarpy County means sports and outdoor activities. Catch an Omaha Storm Chasers baseball game or a Union Omaha Pro soccer match at Werner Park. Visit Fontenelle Forest, where you can enjoy tree rush adventures or hike and bike on one of the many trails. Play a round of golf or experience great fishing. Relax, refresh, and rediscover yourself with a springtime trip. Plan your adventure at GoSarpy.com. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid mineral with protein or Sweet Pro block supplements for space feeding while also stretching your forages up to 25% better, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blauhorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. Husker fans, it's baseball season, and your Nebraska baseball team wants to see you at Haymarket Park. Season tickets, diamond deals, and single game tickets are on sale now. Get your tickets today and help the Huskers show everyone in the country why there is no place like Nebraska. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 1-800-8-BIG-RED. Deer roads, trails, and rivers. You ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what T&L Irrigation is known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high-voltage electric systems, all T&L Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new. It's the T&L standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your T&L Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. T&L, like no other. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Things that impair you come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are the shape of beer and liquor bottles. Others look like cigarettes but aren't cigarettes at all. These are the things we know impair us, the things our parents warned us about. What we're not always aware of is our new prescription or the over-the-counter medicine we picked up just for allergies or a bad cold. See, it doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If you are impaired, driving is deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve 
Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Sarpy County, where great food, drinks, shopping, concerts, and fun await you. Stay, play, and plan your, plan your getaway at GoSarpy.com. Got a couple more segments left here of Sports Nightly. And again, coming up this Saturday, it is finally spring game week. So we are now under the one-week countdown. And last Saturday, they had a scrimmage, another big scrimmage. And Coach Rule afterwards had some high praise for the offense. He said, um... This was the most dominant day we've had on offense ever. On offense, by far the best day um, since I've been here. Meaning, Coach Roll, this is quote. And he said there were any anywhere from, quote, 8, 9, 10, 12 touchdowns in the scrimmage. But he also said that he, um, in fairness, he's not hitting the quarterback and I'm letting a, a ton of plays extend. So you might go back and say, that might be a sack. Uh, don't want to sound the alarm, but it is very, very high praise for the offense on Saturday. So we will uh, see if that continues into coming up this Saturday. But enough about the offense. Let's talk some defense uh, with Riley Van Poppel, the now sophomore um, out of Argyle, Texas. He played in 11 games last year as a true freshman. Five tackles, a tackle for loss, half sack was a big part of that rotation that Coach Knighton was able to build there up front for the defensive line. So here is my conversation with Riley Van Poppel. All right, here with Riley Van Poppel. Uh, well, your first spring, how's it been going for you? It's been great, you know, getting back into the groove. Um, it's kind of weird to think about how, you know, you got a week and a half left. Um, just a few more practices, but it's been fun, a little competition, just trying to get better day by day, so it's been fun. How have you felt, felt like you've gotten better here throughout the spring? Um, I'd say confidence for me. Just looking back on last year, I think that's what I'm focused on right now is just my mental game, you know, trust myself when I'm out on the field. I know physically I, I grew in the winter, so I think I'm just trying to focus on believing in myself and just playing violent and not thinking on the field. We haven't uh, chatted with you since you played, but, you know, there was multiple true freshmen that were able to come in and contribute on the defensive line. What made you ready for the role that they wa wanted you to play last year? You know, I think um, in my mind, I kind of just, I think God put me in that spot. Um, you know, last year I wasn't here in the spring, but I just worked every day at home getting ready because I knew I, had, I would have an opportunity when I got here. You know, T Knight told me that. And so when I got here in the summer, I just grinded every day. Um, and when I had the opportunity, I just wanted to make the best of it because, you know, it's not just about me, but I think my teammates put me in that spot by um, developing me along. You know, older guys like Ty, Nash, Jamari, guys like that, showing me how to kind of fit into the room and get into the group of playing. How good is Coach T Knight at? developing and, and getting you guys ready no matter what level you're at you know he's the best I've been around um, he really opened my eyes when I got here um, kind of make me a 3d player um, to focus on all aspects of the game when it comes to you know stopping the run rushing the passer um, realizing that I don't just need to be one-dimensional but I can do everything um, and just listening to him talk about the game and how he teaches it it's it's nice to be in that room with him it's fun to see the, just the, the bond, the camaraderie with the D-line. Uh, how, how fun is it to be in that room and, and to be around those guys? Yeah, you know, it's a blast. Um, you know, some people know we go by death row, so <laughs> it's fun. We're, we're, I think we're the tightest group on the, on the team. Um, you know, we, we know everything about each other. You know, we're, we're there for each other every day when it gets hard. We know we look to the guys to the left and the right, and we know, you know, that's why we're here. We know everyone's why. We know what everyone's gone through in life. And, you know, it's, just, it's, it's easy to do the hard stuff when you have a group like that. You got uh, Nash coming back, and then Ty decides to come back, too. Certainly a guy that could have gone and pursued the NFL. What did that mean to you guys in that room that he wanted to come back and, and be a part of something bigger? I think it means everything. Um, I know 
personally, I thought he was going to go, but then when I heard he was coming back, I was happy just because, you know, I kind of look at him like an older brother. So it's nice to have another year with him um, and get to know him more and get to learn from him more. But then, like you said, you know, the room morale and the team morale, just having those guys back with the years they had last year and knowing they're going to build off of that, we're going to build off of that, we're going to learn from them. I mean, I think we're going to be one of the best D-lines next year. So. I'll be the first to say we were all wrong last year when we were questioning the, the depth of the defensive line uh, this time a year ago. The way that you guys were able to, to grow and have a lot of guys that ran out there and contributed and there was no drop off. How do you feel like that's continued to grow here this spring? You know, I know I heard T Knight say it a few weeks ago, but he wants like eight or nine starters. And I think that's, we all have that mindset of like, he's not just going to go out there and play three. You know, defensive line is a hard position. Um, you can't take every snap in the game. You're going to have to rotate. And everyone kind of has that mindset knowing like, hey, if I go out and play my best and play my game, I'm going to have a chance to play. So when one person has that mindset um, and they compete against the next person in the room, everyone elevates. And then it kind of makes a hard decision for the coaches because, you know, everyone's playing their best ball. And everyone has a mindset of like, I can play, I can do this because, you know, there's no drop off. We're all, we're all able to go out there and play. It's like line changes in hockey sometimes when coaches like Coach Knighton's like, all right, you three, you three, you three. Um, how, how, good is that for a player to know hey I'm going to get my opportunity I got to make the most of it when I get it you know it's nice um, and you're all right about the hockey thing you're kind of just sitting on the sidelines like you don't know when it's going to be but you got to be ready because you know any moment you know big drive big play just gonna call your name and send you in because someone needs a break and you got to just be ready for it like you said you're not going to know when it happens but you got to know that when you get out there you got to have your head on right have your mind turn I mean for me I turn my mind off and you just got to go play working on a new hairstyle a little bit, trying to trying to let it grow out. Don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but might might just leave it long. Potentially a mullet. There's been some mullets around here. Yeah, I, I had one back in back when I was a little younger, so I might just let it go and <laughs> see what happens with it. Uh, well, quickly approaching a week from this Saturday spring game. Um, how excited are you to be back out in front of Husker Nation again? It's going to be a blast. You know, um, you know, you come here and practice, you see the recruits, you see you know parents, all that stuff, and I just can't wait to get in there with the full stadium. I know. I can't even imagine how many people are going to be there. I'm hoping it's good weather because it's going to be fun. It's going to be competitive, and I think it's going to be a great game. Last thing, just what does this defense need to accomplish between now and then, and then even on the spring game, so that you feel good about where you're going after spring? Um, I think just no, like trusting ourselves, like I said earlier, especially with me, just trusting myself to play, go out there and just play violent, um, play relentless, kind of RDV, what we go by. Um, you know, I think it's what we come out here and do every single day. We practice on it. And we just play with uncommon effort and dominant contact. So. Great stuff, Riley. Appreciate your time. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you. Uh, that was fun. I uh, really enjoyed chatting with Riley Van Poppel there. So he said hopefully it's going to be good weather. Right now, I'm looking at the weather app, and it says it's supposed to be 76 degrees, partly cloudy skies in the morning. will give way to cloudy skies during the afternoon. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High of 76, winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and a maybe 24% chance of participation. So right now, it's looking good. Did you like that weather report, Cole? That was professionally done weather yeah. report. We don't have a dedicated new weather anchor here. So. I feel like we need to find one. <laughs> yeah, we, we I don't know. I just read what I Google. So right. hopefully that's true. Hopefully it, it, I'm sure they're they're doing their job. Yeah. Hopefully it's it's nice. And if there is rain that it uh, holds off till after uh, the spring game. But um, we'll uh, check it as we get closer to kickoff throughout this week. Contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. Final segment of Sports Nightly coming up next. We've got weekend winners. Keep it here. Deer roads, trails, and rivers. You ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tame and 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln.
At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. When you're clocking out and happy hours already started. But... You're clocking out and happy hours already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Husker fans, springtime in Sarpy County means sports and outdoor activities. Catch an Omaha Storm Chasers baseball game or a Union Omaha Pro soccer match at Werner Park. Visit Fontenelle Forest, where you can enjoy tree rush adventures or hike and bike on one of the many trails. Play a round of golf or experience great fishing. Relax, refresh, and rediscover yourself with a springtime trip. Plan your adventure at GoSarpy.com. Oh, sorry. My bad. I was waiting for David to take over the ticker, I guess. Sorry, I was uh, chatting with the guys in the chat. Don't know what we had coming up because uh, we, we will not have a show tomorrow night. We will have baseball on the air. So Wednesday, we got a jam-packed show coming up for you. And we are inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Final segment here of our Monday night edition of Sports Nightly. And... We like to reserve this segment for our weekend winners. And so David is here. David, you got your weekend winner? I do. I'm picking the men's tennis team from yesterday when they faced off against Penn State and they swept them 7-0. to zero. And it was senior night. So I thought that was really special. And I'm glad that they got to sweep them on the senior night. Yeah, it was good. We had them on the show last week. And they uh, were looking for maybe some momentum headed into the Big Ten tournament. So big win for them. Um, always love to close out the season on a high note at, at home. Cole, who you got? I'm gonna. I've been. I've been falling in love with the sport of golf the last few weeks. Have you? In part because of the brilliance of Scotty Scheffler. He oh, so won. you're a bandwagon jumper. I kind of, but doesn't it doesn't matter. I appreciate greatness wherever it pops up. He just uh, is coming off a win last weekend of the RBC Heritage. This is after, of course, he won the Masters uh, two weekends ago. And he's ranked number one in the world, and he plays like it. He's finished 19 under, I believe. Um, excellent golfer, and <laughs> that's my winner. Excellent. He is excellent. Okay, I guess we'll allow it. I, I bet you can't guess what my winner is. I don't. I it is don't think I can. The Oklahoma City Thunder game one win last night. It was an exciting win, 94-92 over the Pelicans. And you know that we were talking about that the other night and how exciting it was for Oklahoma City to have the playoffs back in Oklahoma City. And it was rocking. The announcers just kept saying how loud it was, and it was all over my social media. Just how crazy it was. So um, I'm. Uh, it was uh, awesome to see the atmosphere and also glad that they could get out to the 1-0 series lead here in the NBA they, playoffs. They did the, the whiteout, right? Yes, they did. Yep. Yeah. I remember I'd always seen like highlights from when Westbrook and Durant were playing and they had the whiteout going in the playoffs. It's a good nostalgic kind of feeling. 
Yes, and I still have a lot of those shirts left in that I, I sleep in because they give nice. away shirts a lot, and so they're they're pretty cool. So uh, Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying. On your terms, visit us online at woodhouse.com. All right, that's going to do it for uh, us tonight here on the Sports Nightly program and our baseball show, of course, in hour number one. Coming up tomorrow, we'll be on the air with Husker baseball starting at 5.30. Big game against Kansas, but it's also a big day for Husker softball. They got a doubleheader against Iowa. We will be on the air for that one at 3.45, first pitch at 4. Have a great night, Husker Nation. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Experience personalized service and exceptional deals at Woodhouse Lincoln. With cutting edge technology and incredible design, Woodhouse Lincoln is the place to find your next luxury vehicle. Lease a 2024 Lincoln Aviator for $759 a month for 39 months, 10,500 miles per year, or purchase with 2.9% APR for 36 months. With approved credit, security deposit waived, stock L240075, $5,000 down payment plus first payment and $299 fee due at site. Offer expires 4 30 2024. See dealer for details. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. Introducing the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on a brand new 2023 F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers.